welcome to another episode of Healthy Food, Happy You. I'm your host, Gina Lewis. It's a new year and we all have that holiday weight gain, six pounds to be exact, but who's counting, right? And thanks mom for those cookies, I did appreciate it. We're all in holiday debt up to our eyeballs, I'm sure, and that fiscal cliff talk is just taunting you. But still, we are gonna show you how to have your happiest year yet. Sharon Greenspan is here with us today. Welcome to the show, Sharon. It's so nice to have you here. Thanks, Gina. Sharon is a speaker, an author, and a holistic health practitioner, and she is here to show us some wonderful food to incorporate into our daily eating. And also, later, we're gonna be talking about three simple New Year's resolutions. We're all making New Year's resolutions, right? To make 2013 be the best year yet. So she's gonna show us three simple New Year's resolutions to really practice healthier eating and happier mm -hmm. living this year. So Sharon, tell us a little bit about your background. I know she does it all, by the way. <laughs> Jack of all trades, you name it, she's done it. Well, like a lot of people, I had a lot of serious health issues. Being overweight was one of them. No. Yeah, believe it or not, yep. This tiny <laughs> woman is like, oh, I was overweight. Yeah. I was kind of like a little hippo, you know. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. Uh, yeah, and I had a lot of other health issues, and I needed to change it. And for me, I just knew that lifestyle was a piece of it. That's how I got to where I was, and so I needed to make changes in how I was living. Yeah. What I was eating, my relationship with food, that's really the biggest piece. Very Not interesting. Not just the food itself, but our relationship with it. I have, I have a relationship with food. <laughs> I think we all have a relationship with food. It's like the other, the significant other, right? Right, right. Yeah. And so we need to make some changes with yeah, that. Yeah, so obviously you're yes. living proof. Yes, I released 55 pounds. I've never looked back. I've never looked for them again. They're yeah. gone. Wow. And so uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm a happier person. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a big part of our health, isn't it? Oh, it really is. It's amazing how eating the right things can change your whole life. Mm -hmm. So what are we gonna be making today? So today we are going to make zucchetti, zucchetti. with marinara sauce. Zucchetti, anybody else heard of zucchetti? <laughs> what is zucchetti? <laughs> zucchetti, I, I always like to do this like it's a magic trick. So we are going to take, I'm going to take this ordinary zucchini and make it into pasta. Pasta? So zucchini, zucchini, spaghetti, zucchini. Zucchetti. I get it. Ha ha ha. <laughs> now, and I've got to say, you show this to my kids, they're not going to want to eat this. No. They, they run from green vegetables. So is this something kids will want to eat? This is so something kids will want to eat. When I give talks, uh -huh. I often demonstrate how to use this machine to make the zucchini into pasta. Okay. And I give out samples, and children come back for thirds. What? They say, Miss, please, can I oh. have more? It's like, well, yes, absolutely. It's a mother's <laughs> dream come true. So I'm definitely going to try this with my kids at home. These ingredients, to me, look wonderful. Yeah. So we use all of this in our zucchetti. Yeah. Well, actually, for the zucchetti, we are just going to use the zucchini. Okay. And then we'll make the sauce with spinach and some herbs and garlic. Oh, I love it. And these are really common, simple ingredients. Yeah. That's another piece of my philosophy for preparing food. It has to be easy, it has to be fast, it has to be things that are easily accessible to you. I love you. I just, <laughs> I just love you, thank You're you. You're a mom, you don't have a no, lot of time. No, exactly. So how do we no. start? We are going to use this fabulous machine, which is called a spiruli. And even if you never end up buying one, just say the word spiruli, it's fun. Spiruli. Spiruli, you can say it all day. You can. Get your hands off my spiruli. <laughs> it is really fun. It is fun. It's a simple machine. And let me show you, it has three parts to it. So we have the blade, we have the main housing, and we have the spinner. Okay. So in terms of cleaning, really simple to clean. Just got three parts. The machine itself actually comes with three different blades. So oh. two of them kind of make pasta. One is very uh, large pasta okay. and one is finer pasta. And then we're going to use the straight blade later to show how to cut curlicues or ribbons 
or foods that naturally have a break in them. Now I see what the graphics in some of your books mean. Yes. She's written a ton of books, and when you see them, you'll see what they mean by using the spiruli machine. Okay, so right. this is so easy, a caveman could do it. And this is so easy, Gina can do it. Have, has my producer told you how <laughs> competent I am in the kitchen? He said you're fabulous in the kitchen. <laughs> We're so gonna, fabulous. We're I'm also out. going to trust you with my oh, ceramic no. knife. Ceramic knife. Ceramic knife. So of ceramic those. knives are much sharper than metal. Yes. They also prevent your food from turning um, brown. I didn't know that. Yes. I have one. I didn't know how cool it was. So we are going to take your zucchini. Okay. Mm, any of them. Either one. The only thing I will say about making the zucchetti is it's nice to have a zucchini that's fairly straight. Okay. You know, sometimes they curve a lot. Sure. That'll just make it a little more challenging, but it's fine to have one. So, that's like, straight. even this is fine. That's okay. okay. Yes, we'll just read center if we were going to use that. Okay. So, all you need to do is cut off each end of the zucchini. This could be scary. It's fine. Am I using the right side? I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Done. Perfect. Now, one thing I also love about this machine is it doesn't matter how big your zucchini is. It'll accommodate any size zucchini. Doesn't matter how big your zucchini is, men. <laughs> you get her. <laughs> Bigger is better, I agree. Yeah. Now, notice that there's a circle, so we just want to put the zucchini in the middle of the circle. Okay. And do I push? And then you're gonna, you can push it in, and you can push that in the other side. Not bad, really. Okay. Excellent. Easy. Easy. And then the next part, it requires finding your personal body mechanics. I have really small hands. Okay. So for me, I would probably start like this. We want to push this and turn this. So I'm going to, I would push it with one hand and turn with the other. Okay. When it's big enough, I will usually put my pinky in one place and thumb in another. This could so be interesting. So it all depends on your body mechanics. Okay. We'll see how this goes here and just go. And just go. And just turn. How fun! Can they see this on camera? This is really fun. And that's one of the beauties is that it is fun to do and with a little guidance because it has very yeah. sharp blades, your children can do this. And they'll oh. have fun doing it. And children like to have control over their they food. They do. They're more likely to eat vegetables when they've been involved in the preparation. Agreed. I should know, I have a two-year-old and two 11-year-olds, so. So now you've changed your hand position and you can see it, yes. it is easier this way and it depends how long your zucchini is and how big your hand is. And honestly, I didn't even think about it. It was just a natural thing to do, so this machine is really um, second nature to Yay. use. And see, now we've got all this it's amazing so fun. zucchini. Now my kids would definitely, definitely eat that. Right. So Fun. there you go. You and it just looks made like a whole pasta. plate of zucchetti. Looks like pasta. How cute. It does. So let's go ahead and put this in one of those bowls. Any, which one do oh, you Oh, the prefer? white bowl's fine. We'll do the white bowl. All right. Just dump it in. Yep. Now this is fun. You can let your yes, kids have like a zucchetti war. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to point out that took less time than it takes to boil water. Have I mentioned I love you? <laughs> <laughs> that, that means a lot to a mom. It does. It also means a lot to those who say, I don't have time to eat healthy food. Exactly. You absolutely have time to eat healthy food. We just need to shift which healthy food you're eating. That is true. I mean, I say that a lot, that I just don't have a lot of time. And it's kind of difficult to get those healthy foods in. Mm -hmm. But I do make pasta a lot. Ah. So if I can boil water, really, this was. Much now you simpler. can make zucchetti. Exactly. So should we clean this out of the way? Are we going to do another well, one? Well, as you've seen, so what happens is you get left with a core. And yes, you, I suppose so you can fun. have sword fights sword with fights. kids. Sword fights, exactly. <laughs> Don't worry about the kids getting hurt. They'll be fine. What I like to do is use this as the base of my marinara sauce. OK. Because we never want to waste food. Eh, wonderful. So I'm just using an ordinary blender. High-speed blender, of course, is fabulous. And we can just take this core and throw it in here. Never would have thought of that. Mm -hmm. Fabulous idea. OK. We are going to take one tomato, um, some sun-dried tomatoes, oh, yeah. herbs. 
um, spinach, and we're going to put it all in here mm. and blend our sauce. Sounds so good. Yeah. Gourmet. <laughs> Love it. At exactly. home. Right at home. And it's really fast. Now, one key tip for using a blender, always want to put the watery foods closest to the blade. Okay. So in this case, my blade is at the bottom. So I want to put my tomato Tomatoes. in first because that's going to help things to blend. Okay. So let's grab a fresh tomato. Can we still trust you with the ceramic knife? I slice hope so. That? So how should I slice it for it using in a blender? It doesn't matter because we're just going to use it in a blender. So just fourths is fine or a couple of slices. Is that good? Perfect. OK. Great. Done. Perfect. And if you would grab a piece of sun-dried tomato. These look so delicious. Mm. And what I like to do is actually use a kitchen scissors to cut my sun-dried tomato. OK. Because I've tried it with a knife, and it's very hard with a knife to cut the dried tomato. But with the scissors. Again, something your kid can help you out with. Super exactly. fun. Exactly. Very safe, very easy. We are going to take a quarter cup of herbs, okay. tightly packed herbs. That glass is actually a measuring cup. And I just went out to my garden and picked some parsley and basil and oregano. You can use any combination of those. You can use thyme, marjoram, savory, whatever you have in your herb garden or whatever you have that's handy. So we're going to do a quarter cup? Yes. Now, I always get confused with these because I'm like, if there's space, does that mean you need more? Do you? Like, how right. would you do this? And so that's why I say tightly packed. So we're really going to cram it in there. This was, what is this? So that's parsley. Mm, I love that smell too. And this is um, basil, right? Yes. And this is oregano. Thai oregano. Oh, it smells so good. So how would you mix it up? So I, I would uh, do probably a lot of basil and parsley. The oregano is very intense. OK. Uh, but it good depends on your personal taste. I'm kind of an intense person, so I'd <laughs> probably layer on that, that oregano. So you just, do you pack it in? Do you? I would pack it in. OK. Get out of there. We're just going to do a lot of parsley. Yeah. Parsley is so good for you. It's so cleansing. If you love spices, can you do a little bit more than a quarter cup? Absolutely. Good, good. I always think that recipes are just a guideline. It's always great to change a recipe to suit your personal taste. And I like to make notes in my recipe books about how I changed it so that way I know I am. this is what I like, this is what my family likes. Yes. Huge fan of that. I'll be like, Caitlin said no, never again, or <laughs> add more celery salt, or right. little notes to help you in the future. So yeah. is that good? Perfect. And dump add it in. Add that in our blender. Now, good. personally, I like garlic. I'm a garlic, garlic kind of girl. Oh, me too. <laughs> so let's grab some garlic, and we'll put a clove of garlic in there. Now, do we have to bust this open or? Yes, we do. Oh, fun. Now, how do you do this? I personally take the end of an end of and, a knife. Yes. And bash it. Exactly. And and I would do that with the handle. I mean, it, you can just press down on it. So you just. Yes. You don't need to get your anger issues out on the garlic. I, I have some anger issues, <laughs> but luckily I eat healthy, so most of the time I'm happy. Great. Oh, it smells so good. Yes. So the recipe when you're using one core and one tomato and one piece of sun-dried tomato calls for a half clove of garlic. But again, it's up to you. If you really love it, go for it. Mm -hmm. So it calls for a half clove of garlic? Right. Let's just do the whole thing. OK. Sounds good. Sounds good. Love garlic. And then instead of salt, I usually like to use celery. Celery is a whole food that is salty naturally, and it's nice when you get the fiber and all the other micro minerals that are in there. Agreed. And actually, I had no idea about <laughs> celery salt until I met you last month, and I have been using this in everything. It is so wonderful. Oh, fabulous. And it just really adds a phenomenal taste to your food without the guilt and without mm -hmm. feeling as dehydrated and yucky. So I love celery salt. Great. Great to have. Yeah, so when you can't get fresh celery, like I could not get nice celery at the market yesterday, I have some celery salt. So use about a quarter teaspoon. I'll just do a few shakes. I'm one of those people that doesn't measure How's things that? usually. That looks great. Good, good. You can always adjust. Exactly. 
Right. And that's about it. I'm going to push this down just a little bit. Okay. And then we are ready to blend. We have our marinara sauce. Wonderful. So we've used all our food. It's taken only a few moments yeah. to prepare a meal. Not bad at all. Easy. And so in just a few moments, dinner's ready. That is uh, literally, that took us under 15 minutes and a lot of it was me going, do I use this? Do I? And once you figure it out, I mean, really, this would be a five-minute thing, right? Exactly. So yes. easy. Oh, yes. And it looks so fun and yummy. I can't wait to try it. So we'll be back in just a little bit to talk about three simple New Year's resolutions. Just three, that's all, to make this the happiest year yet. And we'll be enjoying the zucchetti at the table. Thank you, Sharon, for this wonderful recipe. I can't wait to try it. So glad. We'll be back. Welcome back. We're here with Sharon Greenspan again with her yummy zucchetti that she made for us. I'm so excited. Can't wait to dig in. We have a lot to talk about. I definitely want you to stick around because in a few minutes we're going to be talking about three simple New Year's resolutions. I swear, they're simple and probably some of the most important New Year's resolutions you could possibly make. It will change your life, so stay tuned for that. Really, there's so much I could say about you. I mean, yoga teacher, right? Yes. Certified yoga teacher, health practitioner, health coach, um, so much we could go on and on. But you have these wonderful books, too, that I definitely want to talk about. One, the Spiruli book. Right. A lot of people kept asking me, what else can they use the machine for? They're tired of just zucchini. So I came up with a whole recipe book that has many recipes using beets, turnip, parsnip, pepper, and sauces. It's just the key of putting them together. It's very simple. Yeah. And this looks very, I mean, it just looks tempting. There are tons of stuff on here that just make you want to dive in and try it out. So definitely, if you're interested in the spiruli that you saw earlier, pick, pick that book up too, and it'll give you some ideas to get started. One of the, oh my gosh, the best books ever. Honestly, I'm such a huge fan. I'm a fan. Can I get this autographed? Is Eating Your Way to Health Workbook. I've got to read our viewers this, this review. So this reviewer, Ruth O, says this book should be called a playbook instead of a workbook. The author has so craftily and passionately explained this topic. She makes you believe that you can make these healthy changes without killing your bank account. A must read. Exercises are easy, insightful, and will help you make the change to a healthier way to live and love your life. And there, I mean, I could go on and on. There are tons of reviews on this book that are just wildly wonderful. Um, I started reading the introduction. The most popular question prospective clients ask is, can you give me some recipes? She continues, I can. And after years of helping people to make the journey from unhealthy eating to healthy eating, I can state that lack of recipes is not the problem. Wow. I mean, <laughs> really, when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. Every time I see or interview a health coach, I'm like, give me recipes, recipes. But I have books, cabinets, shelves of recipes, and I never can find what to eat. You're right. You hit, hit on something that I think is very common to all of us. It's not the recipes we're seeking. No, we're trying to change our behavior, and knowledge does not equal behavior change. OK, so with that, let's mm -hmm. transition into these three New Year's resolutions that we should be making. So let's list them. Right, so the three changes that you need to make are, and it must be done in this order, you need to change your heart, you need to change your head, and then you need to change what you put in your mouth. Very powerful. Three things. We can all do three things, right? Mm -hmm. But those three things are very impactful. So changing your heart. Right. Right. Is that the first That's one? That's the first one, right. Changing your heart. What do you mean by that? Right. We need to have a deep-seated emotional reason for making the change. 
We need to be very clear on why the change is important. Without that, you're not going to change. Okay. If it's half-hearted, a half-hearted yeah. decision is one that doesn't carry through. A lot of, I was about to dig right in, but this is, <laughs> this is important, I want to chat. So a lot of people go into the New Year's thinking, I'm going to be healthy, I'm going to get that gym membership. Lots of money goes into those gym memberships and don't get right. used. But they aren't really thinking about why they want to be healthier. Mm -hmm. So what was it for you that, I know you had mentioned earlier, weight gain. Right. Yes, I weighed a lot more. I weighed more than 55 pounds more than I weigh now. And at five foot one, 155 pounds is a lot of weight. Right, right. I had terrible arthritis. In fact, they thought my spine was going to fuse together into one piece. Oh my goodness. I had very bad depression, severe depression. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I knew that pharmaceutical drugs were not the right path. And right. I realized that what was happening for me, it was my whole lifestyle. It was the way I was leading my life, and that's what needed to change. Sure. And it's very common in our American mm -hmm. way of life. I mean, we have the fast food, and everything seems convenient, but it's not convenient to our health and our happiness. For me, well, I mean, I, I became a vegetarian when I was six years old. So honestly, it was about mm -hmm. the logic of it all. It mm -hmm. just does not make sense to be hunting down families <laughs> and eating their dead bodies. It just <laughs> is a bizarre thing that I just can't comprehend why in today's day and age we still do that. Right. Um, but, but now as a mom, I see that as my responsibility. I mean, I have brought these children into the world. I need to be there for them. And I can't ever imagine not being there for them because I made poor decisions. Mm -hmm. It's just, right. ugh, I can't do it. I love them so much. And your behavior is also showing them how to live their life. That's true. And sometimes we forget that we are a role model, not just in the perfect good moments, but in every single moment every of our <laughs> life. Isn't that the truth? And it's okay to, to show making mistakes and making the choices to rectify those mistakes. Yeah. So again, that first piece is finding the heart and changing the heart. Finding that reason. Do you want yeah. to watch your grandchildren walk down the aisle and graduate college? For me, I got tired of being miserable. Mm -hmm. I finally reached that low point of crying every single day and deciding, I don't want to do that and I cannot do this for the next 40 years of my sure. life. So when you finally change your heart, and I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it makes an impact. You're, you get a commitment out of that. Yes. So that's where you need to start is getting that commitment going by changing your heart. Right. Now the second one, change your mind. Right, so changing your mind, that's often the ideas and the knowledge that we think we have about food. We tell ourselves all kinds of stories about food. Mm -hmm. It's Aunt Martha's best recipe. Oh, I, know. I have to eat the Going sweet home potato for Christmas, casserole. You've got to have all the traditional food that's made every single year of your life instead of just letting those things go. Or, right. Yeah. So, yeah. and the protein. We need protein, protein, protein. We hear that all the time. We do. So, or we tell ourselves, well, I just love it though, but I like chocolate and I want to have some. Right. That doesn't mean it's healthy for you, and that doesn't mean it's serving your highest purpose. Right, exactly. Living your best life and really getting what you're supposed to get out of your food. Um, also, when you become knowledgeable about something, it does change the way you look at it. So that mm -hmm. sugar isn't as appealing anymore because you know better. Right. The third one, we're running out of time here, <laughs> so we got to talk fast. But these are very important, very easy changes once you really... Once you delve into them, they delve are. Them. So when you, you have that compelling reason, you change the knowledge. Changing what you put in your mouth becomes pretty effortless. It oh. is a change. You need to be conscious because you're going to buy things at the supermarket that mm -hmm. maybe you weren't buying before. But when you have that deep-seated commitment, it comes, it comes naturally. naturally. I love that. Yes. It really does. You have the commitment. You have the knowledge of what really is the right thing to eat and what to stay away from. I am not staying away from this. I'm about to dive right in. <laughs> Can't wait to try it. Okay, here we go. Mm. Oh, amazing. Right away, the flavors just pop out. So good. good. Thank you. You're very happy to be here. Mm -hmm. So happy to have you on the show. 
This is wonderful. We're going to chat on after the show. If you want to contact Sharon Greenspan, get any of these books, really, Eating Your Way to Health workbook is fabulous. The Spruly book, wonderful for all those ideas. You can contact Sharon at www.wildsuccess.us for us. And um, she can tell, tell them what they can Sure, they can contact. contact me about any of the books. Or if they're interested in coaching, I work with people one-on-one. -on -one, and I work in person or telephone or Skype because we're changing behaviors. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not just the knowledge, but we need over time to change the choices people are making, to have strategies for yeah. the holidays, to have exactly. tactics for parties or for sports celebrations. So Skype, you can be anywhere and get the help that you need from Sharon. Really appreciate you being on the show. You can find more information about our show. We're also going to have some behind the scenes stuff, some additional information on YouTube later. So you can look us up at www.healthyfoodhappyyou.com for more info on today's show. And I can't wait to see you next time. Really hope these, these three simple things have changed your life. And uh, we'll see you soon. Look us up on Facebook too. See ya. Thanks, Gina. Thank you.